Hey, this is Josh for Retool.net, and in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the new features coming to the upcoming version of Premiere Pro. Now, this was the version that was announced at NAB 2016, and a lot has been made of some of the larger features, like proxy creation, transcode on import, HSL secondaries, VR video support, but in this video, we're gonna talk about a lot of the smaller features that haven't been covered as extensively elsewhere. Of course, we hope to do some separate videos on some of the larger features as well, but in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the sort of less sexy features that haven't gotten as much attention. So I have sort of a dummy timeline here, and I've applied a few effects, some color correct, things like that, and I just wanna go through it and one thing that has been added is the ability to remove attributes. Now in the past we had something called remove effects, which was just the ability to blanket remove all video effects. So for instance, if I take this clip here and if I were to do a color correct on it, so I'll go over to my basic tab and just do a few parameters just so we know there's something on there. And I'll come back over to editing and I'm just gonna throw a Gaussian blur on there. And in the past, we were only able to remove all effects, but now we have the sort of equivalent of paste attributes, which let you pick which effects you wanted to remove. So this one is called remove attributes, and this is probably my favorite feature of this next version of Premiere, because if I select all my clips in my timeline, and let's say I'm prepping for color correct, and I wanna make sure that I keep all my regular effects, but get rid of anything having to do with color correct. So I'll go to edit, remove attributes, and this time I could select which effects stay and which ones go. So I'm gonna deselect all of these things, deselect the Gaussian blur, but I wanna make sure I remove the three-way color corrector I have on another clip, not the one that I was just working on, and the Lumetri color on several clips. So hit okay, and there it goes. Gaussian blur is still there, but the Lumetri color in this case is gone. We also have a new feature for markers. So if I go over to the markers panel, you'll notice there's no markers showing because I don't have any sequence markers. And in the past, to see clip markers, I would have to do this, select that clip, and then I could see them. But now I have this feature where I could come in and click show all clip markers in sequence. And this way I can come in and name any clip markers or search any clip markers. I can also even search by color. So if I click on a color, I can show all markers of that color. And that way I could do things for visual effects, things for taking notes, and just really be more granular about my markers. Now one thing you should know is that if you have this setting on, let me just make a sequence marker, and I'll name that sequence marker. When you have that setting on, you can't see your sequence markers. Now, I would prefer it if you could see sequence and clip markers in that setting, but the way they've implemented it, it's just the clip markers if you have that checked. So that's just something to know. Another thing that's been implemented in the timeline is there is a new minimum track height. So check this out. If I hit command and the minus key on my keyboard, this was the old minimum, I believe, and now we've got this new smaller height. And you'll notice I could still see all my clip markers. Now if I hit option and minus, I have the same thing with audio, and even at that smallest setting, I could still see the waveform. So this new minimum height is great if you have a ton of tracks. Another small feature that's been added is the ability to remember the twirl state of things in the effects control. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say you were doing a photo montage and you had to do tons of zooms and opacities and things like that in your effects control. It used to be that you'd have to come into the effects control on every clip once it was selected and twirl it open to be able to have those things open all the time. But now when I go from clip to clip, you'll see that each clip I select it remembers what the last twirl state was, and because I had them open, it keeps them open. And that's really huge, and I kind of wish that had been there a while ago, but it's nice that it's finally there now. Now that also applies to the twirl state of the export dialog. So if I hit Command M, it will remember, let's say, if the video codec was open or the basic video settings. So I'm gonna close them out, hit Cancel, then I'm gonna hit Command M again, and you'll notice that they're closed because it remembered the twirl state. Now there have been a lot of shortcuts that have been added in terms of keyframing. So let me show you a few of these. 
So if I zoom in a little bit, you'll see I have some opacity keyframes on this clip. If I go to my keyboard shortcuts, I'm gonna hit Command Option K, but you could also go to your Premiere Pro keyboard shortcuts menu. I'm gonna search for next keyframe. And you'll see that I already set one up, which is Control K to go to the next keyframe. And previous keyframe, I did Control J. Now that was kind of going with After Effects shortcuts of J and K. I didn't want to use those directly because of course J, K, L, and Premiere would interfere. So I did Control J for previous and Control K for next. Now those aren't set by default, so you'll have to set something up. But in practice, you have to know to select the clip and this works in the timeline or in the effects control, and I'll show you that in a second. And if I hit Control K, it'll go to the next, Control J to the previous, and again in the effects control window, if that's active, it'll work there as well. Now, of course, the new shortcuts don't stop there. We have shortcuts now to move keyframes, so let me show you that. Command Option K, if I search for move keyframe, you can set up a shortcut to move video keyframes one frame earlier or later, and Obviously, you can figure out how that would work. There's also shortcuts to increase or decrease keyframe value. Let me show you that. So if I search the word increase keyframe, you can see I set one up for video already. So it's option command and then the plus key. And then for decrease keyframe, I did option command and minus. So if I do option command minus, you'll see it's lowering the value. And if I do Option Command Plus, it's raising the value. They've also added a shortcut to add or remove a keyframe. So if I search for Add Keyframe, you'll see there are shortcuts for that as well. And you could set up whatever you want. And of course, that will add or remove a keyframe. Now, leaving keyframing, there's also been a shortcut added to allow you to zoom to frame and what that'll do is allow you to zoom into the closest possible level at one frame zoom. So obviously you could set up whatever shortcut you want to do that. Another command has been added. Now sometimes Premiere has the issue where it will lose audio waveforms. So if you go to the clip menu, you'll notice there's a new command called generate audio waveform. So if you happen to lose waveform display, you can regenerate them this way. If you find yourself losing your waveform view ever, you can certainly set up a keyboard shortcut to speed that up. Another nice small little change they added is in direct manipulation. And by that I mean the ability when you're dragging your video in the program monitor, let's say you want to just constrain it so you're only dragging left and right or up and down. Now you can hold the shift key and you'll notice when I drag it's only going up and down. And again if I start left and right and hold shift it's only going left and right. Now another thing I want to mention, you'll notice that there are some improvements to the Lumetri color tools like say the HSL secondaries, the improved Lumetri scopes. But something you may notice is some of your old correction tools aren't where you expect them to be. So if I search for three-way color corrector for instance, you'll notice that's now found in the obsolete category of video effects. So they will still work, it's just that Adobe is trying to tell us that the Lumetri color panel is sort of the way to go moving forward. So things like the Fast Color Corrector, Luma Corrector, Luma Curve, RGB Color Corrector, RGB Curves, Three-Way Color Corrector, Auto Levels, Auto Color, Auto Contrast, and lastly, highlights and shadows have been moved into this obsolete category. So if you don't tend to search for effects, you tend to just go to whatever category they're found in, you might find they're missing, but they're not. They're still there, they're just in this obsolete category. And again, they still work, it's just them kind of giving you the gentle nudge to start using that color panel. There's also been a new workspace added to Premiere. So if I click on the word libraries, you'll see that this is a view of my library. So this is one I set up called social icons. So I could work with any of those vectors. But the new integration also comes with Adobe Stock. So let's say I want a clip with a horse in it. I could search for the word horse and tell it I only want videos and it'll show me and I can actually purchase them directly from here. So if I click on that license button, 
it'll tell me that I have zero licenses purchased with Adobe stock. But if you do have some credits with Adobe stock, you could purchase directly from this bin or you could purchase directly from your project panel as well. So if I save the preview over to my social icons and I click on add to project, it will download that clip. You'll notice a progress window opens up and that is a new window as well. And if I go over to the project panel, you'll notice I have a preview of that clip. Now, of course, I could work with that clip as a placeholder, but I can also click on this button to purchase it directly from my project panel. Again, it's going to tell me I don't have any credits, so I can't actually purchase it. But if you did, then you'd be able to purchase it right from there and get the full res version in your project. I'm just going to go back to my editing workspace now. And lastly, I am going to talk about one of the more major features, and that's the HSL secondaries feature. So if I come over here, I don't want to do a full run through in this video, but I'm going to go to my color panel and just show you generally how it works. So if I click on the color panel and HSL secondary, and if I click on set color, I can get the red from their uniform here. Now I'm going to click on this little checkbox to show the color slash gray mode, which will show me my selection. And now I'm going to click add color and sample a few times to try to get a better representation of their jackets. Now in this case, I'm going to come in and just refine that a little to get a better selection, get a little more saturation in there and a little more luminance. And I'll just expand this as well. And I have a OK key. I'm going to denoise it a little bit and I'm going to blur it a hair. And now you can see what my key is. Again, it's not perfect. These tools aren't super sophisticated, but it's a good kind of first step at having secondaries. I'm going to shut off the color gray mode and I'm just going to change the color. And you'll see it does an OK job at that. The big caveat and more of why I wanted to cover this in this video is to warn that this actually works on top of effects. So for instance, let's say I had a master color correction and I drastically changed the color of the clip. Well, let's do that. So I'm gonna go to my master tab and go to basic correction. Now, if you guys have been following along with our other videos, you know that master color correction is basically something that affects the clip anywhere it is in the timeline, anywhere it is in the project. So if I had cut this clip up and edit it into my timeline already 10 times, this would be the place I'd probably want to do the work, not in the actual clip-based color correction. So anyway, let's just say I come in here and I change the temperature and the tint, and I change the exposure of the clip, and now I go back to where my HSL secondary is and go to my color gray mode, and you'll notice my selection no longer is valid because Instead of taking a selection of the color before any effects, which is what I would prefer, of course there are some exceptions like lookup tables and stuff, which I could understand the argument for. It's taking the sample after all the effects. So let's make another example of this. I'm gonna reset my master correction. I'm just gonna go over to my master and delete that Lumetri color effect. Now my selection is back intact and I'm going to shut off the color gray mode. But this time I'm just going to put an effect in line. So if I go to, let's say, Fast Blur, I'm going to put that above and I'm going to blur it. And you'll notice if I go back to that color gray mode, my selection's now blurry. So it's just things like this you have to be careful of when you're using the HSL secondary. And really just to know that what the workflow needs to be is that you have to do the HSL key before you do anything else because it will mess it up. So it's just a bit of a warning that I'm gonna throw out there with the HSL secondary. Remember that. All right, well, I hope this helped. And of course, we hope to have more deep dives into some of those larger features as well, especially in terms of proxy creation, transcode on import, copying to new destinations, things like that. And we'll have separate videos for those, but really we just wanna to touch on those things that other people just really aren't covering about this new release. Hope this helped and please leave any comments or questions if you have any. See you guys soon. Be sure to check out our new product, Color Retooled, which is a set of looks presets for Premiere Pro CC. A ton of easy presets that you can use in Premiere and Speedgrade CC to quickly edit the look of your clips. Everything from brightness and contrast 
to vintage effects, to things like vignettes that editors can quickly add to their clips and keep working. Also check out Relink Retooled, our conform tool for Premiere and Final Cut that will let you conform to your QuickTime media of different durations and file names than your original media. You can use it with combinations of tape name, file name, and of course you can use partial tape name and file name combined with metadata like time code and frame rate to help you relink your clips quicker and easier than ever before.